we can think of a couple of casting agents who should probably be fired. Hey, bro. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 actors who look nothing like their comic book characters. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at the iffy casting choices of actors in roles that received widespread criticism for their lack of similarity to their comic book counterparts. While some performances might be bad, we're looking more at the overall choice in comparison to the source material and not on the acting ability. Note that both heroes and villains are fair game here. Oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Number 10, Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze slash Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider franchise. Looks like somebody's tripping out. <laughs> Might be a big shot out there, Blaze, but in here you are nothing but a monkey in a cage. Leave it to Nicolas Cage to turn something frightening into something kind of funny. This strange and prolific star brought a wide range of bizarre inspirations to the character of Johnny Blaze, not once, but twice in two Ghost Rider films. So, that happened. Cage indeed made the character his own, but he did so much to fans' disappointment, as he lacked the control and calculation of a stunt performer. He also appears to be more of a genuine psycho that's bent on making his foes laugh at him. Criticized for an uneven performance, Cage's version of Johnny Blaze has been looked down on by fans of the series. Then again, maybe he shouldn't have taken acting lessons from Snakes for the role. Am I correct in thinking that your pet cobras actually inspired you in terms of the movement for the character. Yes, yeah, that's 100% true. Number 9, Jennifer Garner as Electra Nachos, Daredevil and Electra. Sometimes the studio makes the same mistake twice. Buying into her recent celebrity in the TV series Alias, Jennifer Garner was cast as the master martial artist slash assassin and love interest for the Daredevil adaptation in 2003. Although noted by critics for her stylish approach to the role and her acting, fans instead complained that Garner lacked the carefree recklessness that Frank Miller had given Elektra in the comics, which also made her an object of Daredevil's desire. Fans also took issue with Garner's obvious non-Greek appearance, clashing with her character's origins, and the lack of red satin, well, at least in the first film. The studios, however, didn't seem to mind the backlash and cast Garner as Elektra again in the 2005 self-titled spin-off, which further cemented these criticisms. Nice trick. I've seen it before. <laughs> Number 8. Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Victor Freeze slash Mr. Freeze. Batman and Robin. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Sometimes even looking the part can go horribly wrong. When it came down to casting the role of the insane super scientist Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger seemed physically imposing enough for the role. Alas, then we saw the silly costume. Intended to be menacing, the character turned into a walking joke with a suit that seems more like a glam rock outfit than a cryogenic life support device. Mix that with the clunky dialogue, made mostly of awful ice-related puns, and this was a role that Batman fans soon wished they could forget. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. Number 7. Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm slash the Human Torch. Fantastic Four, aka Fant Forstick. Johnny Storm. So that's the piece of shit Toyota you've been talking about. Oh yes it is. Josh Trank had good intentions with his reboot of the disastrous Fantastic Four franchise from the previous decade by casting an ethnically diverse team of superheroes. Abandoning the source material and stating that he wanted to root his films in today's demographics, Trank's decision to cast Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm was not a bad play at all. Flame on. However, that became a controversial topic once fans learned that Kate Mara would be cast as Johnny Storm's sister, Sue Storm. Where's that? Although the movie's plot explained the racial difference between the siblings, the casting choice added to the needless plot complexities that were only one of the many problems that led to this film's mega failure. We'd like to continue our existing relationship. So, if we're all in agreement? We're not. Excuse me? We're not remotely all in agreement. Number six, Keanu Reeves as John Constantine. Constantine. At least it's nice enough. In what sounds like a case of Hollywood executives not even glancing at the source material, Francis Lawrence's adaptation of Alan Moore's gritty paranormal detective series Hellblazer ran into immediate fan troubles with the casting of Keanu Reeves as John Constantine. You're insane. Far from the original blonde-haired character with similar features to the pop star Sting, Reeves also lacked the characteristic charm and genuine compassion Constantine has for humanity. Instead, opting for gritty, middle-finger-giving cold-heartedness, this depiction of the obscure hero was a flop with many fans of the Hellblazer series. You would have thought that the producers would have known better for this one, as Constantine has been steadily appearing in the comics for a good 20 years before the film's release. But despite all this, the adaptation did go on to gross over $230 million at the box office, so that's something. Midnight Jesus. I thought the thing was authentic. 
Number five, Seth Rogen as Britt Reed slash the Green Hornet, the Green Hornet. This is my town now. My name is the Green Hornet. Fresh off recent fame from various Judd Apatow produced comedies, Seth Rogen's choice to portray the playboy come masked vigilante the Green Hornet may have seemed good on paper, but modernizing the Depression era hero is where the casting went wrong. Co-written by Rogan and directed by Michael Gondry, the Green Hornet took the well-to-do Britt Reid character and transformed him into a spoiled slacker with no respect for his legacy. Adding to this unfortunate reappropriation were critics who bashed Rogan's performance, calling it underwhelming and above all, kind of miscast. The actor has since cited the nightmarish conditions of making the movie and admitted being unprepared to deal with the blockbuster approach to filmmaking, emphatically stating that no sequel is ever going to get made. Doesn't matter. We did it. We did. Number four, Jason Momoa as Aquaman, DC Cinematic Universe. Tuck. The comic book version of Aquaman has had very few changes to his appearance over the last 25 years. For almost an entire comic book career, Aquaman, aka Arthur Curry, was the stereotypical super pale, short blonde haired Adonis. That is, until the appearance of Jason Momoa's Aquaman in the 2016 film Batman v Superman. Please, don't get us wrong, we're really excited to see more of Momoa's Arthur Curry on the big screen, but for die-hard fans of the character, there are literally dozens of them, are rather upset that Momoa looks absolutely nothing like any version of Aquaman we've ever seen. And no, not even that gone-awful manly 90s version. Number 3, Halle Berry as Patience Phillips slash Catwoman. Catwoman. She's good and you know it. Whatever. Forget not looking the part, how about not even having the same character name? Along with many flaws found in this disastrous Catwoman film, casting Halle Berry was not necessarily the big problem. However, it was kind of a big insult to the DC icon to remove any association whatsoever with her origin. In this 2004 box office bomb, Barry does not play Selena Kyle, but rather Patience Phillips, a graphic designer for a cosmetic company instead of the wily cat burglar of her namesake from the Batman franchise. Although Barry did bring the curvaceous flexibility and sass to the character, she was so far flung from the original that she does not even seem remotely to resemble the classic comic bad girl. I'm Patience Phillips. <laughs> That's who's under there. Number two, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It's cherry. The epic team up of the Batman and Superman franchises was bound to happen sometimes, especially in this era of gritty reboots. Fans knew Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman was in trouble when the jittery Jesse Eisenberg was cast as Lex Luthor, however. Hello, break the bad news. Sporting long hair and resorting to childish antics, leaving jars of urine on politicians' desks, Eisenberg's performance and look were a far cry away from the psychotic corporate mastermind that is Lex Luthor. Although we did get to see Eisenberg as Luthor in all his bald-headed glory towards the end of the film, it was a bit too little too late. He's hungry. He's found us. And he's coming! Number one, Topher Grace as Eddie Brock slash Venom, Spider-Man 3. Look, I'm begging you. If you do this, I will lose everything. Comic book fans awaited in eager anticipation when they learned that Venom would appear in Sam Raimi's third installment of his acclaimed Spider-Man movies. Those fan dreams were shattered upon learning that Topher Grace, known for playing the spindly, geekish Eric Foreman on that 70s show, was going to play the role of Spider-Man's most iconic doppelganger, the bodybuilder turned monster, Eddie Brock. Hey, Parker. My god, Eddie. Almost the polar opposite to Brock's character model. This casting choice was made even more perplexing with the casting of the more similar looking Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman instead of Venom. This left many to wonder if anyone in Hollywood had ever even picked up a comic book before. It's hard to believe what's happening. The brutality of it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.